Here's a video about marginal cost. We, here's the situation. We're selling sporks and we produce 7 million boxes of sporks. Uh, let's say this is every week, week. Okay. And our total cost for each week is $39 million. And I want to know how costly will it be to in increase production? That would probably, in a real world problem, that'd probably be combined with information about how much money we would get from that increase in production. Would we sell them all? How much would that cost? How much uh, revenue would we get in? But let's let's strip it down to just just the cost issue for this for this video. Um, you might think that the key number is going to be: Do we just calculate a per per box cost? Let's see. Do we just calculate the cost divided by the production level? Well, let's see. What would that be? It'd be $39 million over 7 million boxes of sporks. And what is that? That's about 5.6. And that would be dollars per box. OK. Well, let's see if that makes sense. Well, what does that do? That takes the entire production or the entire production, 7 million, and the entire cost. It divides the entire cost here by the entire production. But what we're really, really interested in is we're interested, interested in changing the production level, increasing the production level. And if you look here, there's a very crucial thing. It cost us $20 million just to have the factory at all and not to produce any sporks. Like if we had a holiday week or if we had to had a strike or something, it would cost us $20 million just in insurance and taxes and whatever. Um, fixed costs there are, or overhead, just to keep the place to, to place in existence, and that isn't something that's going to have anything to do with increasing the production. If I increase the production, that's not going to change. So I shouldn't be including that 20 in here. And also, this curve is tilting, and so it's not clear how to. Uh, it's curving. It's not clear how to include that. Well, that's because this is really completely incorrect. So. We really don't do that because it includes all of this stuff about the first 7 million boxes, and we don't care about that. We're asking about what happens if we increase production or change production, and that's a very realistic scenario. Not to say all or nothing. Do I go 0 or 7? It's now that I'm producing 7 this week, do I produce 7.1 or 6.9 or 7.2? It's all about changes in production. So changes, that's all about derivatives. Okay, Because a derivative is defined to be, let's start with a change in cost and divide by a change in production. And then we even say, well, what if those are really small and we're willing to settle for a tangent line approximation? And that's what this dashed line is for. If somebody calculated that tangent line for us, that would allow us to do some just very simple Algebra 1 kind of math that tells us if we know the dx, a small change in the amount of production, what is the change in the cost going to be? Okay, And that's automatically not going to include the overhead. If I s take this curve and I just raise it up or lower it by changing the overhead, it's not going to change that line at all. Okay, Let me actually write that down. I've mentioned this in class. These words overhead or fixed cost, that's the C of 0. And that's what's immaterial to this problem. It's very material if you're going to start a new factory, but if the factory's already there, that's not going to be something that's important. Okay, so suppose that we know somebody gave to us, calculated, modeled, whatever. They told us DCDX is four dollars per box, and that's in fact that's what what's going on here in this picture, which for some reason isn't coming. Okay, turns out the line of the, the slope of this guy is four. You can check that if you want to pause the video and check and see that that slope is 4. It really is. So $4 per box is the actual slope of that line, dc, dx. Okay? So if we increased x by 1 unit, in other words, dx equals 1, and remember that's a million boxes here, then this is the simplest interpretation of the derivative then C will increase, because this is a positive number, by 4 units, or in other words, $4 million. Okay. 
Well, I have to say roughly because this isn't a small dx, and this only works really well when dx is small. But you know what? If I go from one week to the next, and I increase from 7 million to 8 million boxes, that's a drastic change. That isn't actually realistic. What am I going to do next week, more realistically? We might have dx equals, let's say, 50,000 boxes, a 5% increase. OK. Then, this is probably going to be a good approximation. Okay, then I just, and now I need to use the math a little bit. DC, yeah, just solve this. It's $4 per box. It's my marginal cost times DX. But I now know DX, so I'm just going to leave the units out for a second. 4 times 0 0.05 is 0 0.2. Or in other words, 200,000 boxes. $200,000, sorry. Dollars. Okay. And so that's the kind of use we have, or the most basic use we have for the marginal cost. Um, we're going to have more sophisticated uses later. But that's how you want to think about it. I'm changing x. I increase production by a certain amount. How much is that going to cost me? Here, it was the kind of problem where I actually just we had some reason to believe that somebody's calculated this, this number for us. And we never had a, uh, a formula for this. In a minute, I'll show you a version with a formula. I want to say a couple words, though, about the shape of this graph. And I couldn't really make sense of this for you until I have the notion of marginal cost. It's another great application. We've already seen that the reason C of 0 is not equal to 0 is overhead or fixed costs that don't depend on production at all. Now, it's always increasing. That makes sense. Because if production increases, it's just going to cost more. That's a very easy thing to say in terms of marginal cost. It says that C prime of x, let me stick it in right here, C prime of x is always greater than 0. If it weren't, that'd be really weird. It'd say it was actually cheaper to produce more sporks. I guess it could happen, but it's very rare. But why is it not just a straight line from here? Well, if I, as I increase from 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2, I've got a certain rate of increase. That's the marginal cost, cost per additional spork made. And then that rate actually gets lower because the slope's getting lower. That's indicating that the marginal cost is lower in here than it was. That's realistic. Um, it doesn't always happen, but it's realistic in that maybe in this region, I'm becoming a pretty big buyer of, uh, of spork-making materials, like the plastic, the raw material to make the sporks, or the, the machinery for the factory. And I can negotiate some volume discounts. It's called economies of scale. Economies of scale. And that can make the C prime of x decrease. Notice I'm already talking about something a little bit sophisticated here. I'm talking about the change in a slope. And that's a change of a change. It's actually secretly the second derivative. We'll talk about that very soon. But so that's that's why the slope is maybe less in here. Now when why would it be bigger out here? That might be because um, I'm kind of overdriving my factory, maybe having to pay people overtime or something like that, or maybe the products are getting scarce, the, the, the raw materials are getting scarce. That means that now, in this region, it's actually increasing quite quickly. Probably somewhere in here is a good place to be. Even though it's a lot more costly than it was to produce nothing, I'm probably going to make more money by selling my sporks. Probably somewhere in here is the sweet spot. To really figure that out, we're going to have to compare that to, um, to the revenue side, the money coming in. Now, really quickly, um, um, the book problems tend to give you often a formula. If you're given a formula for this, like here's a simpler function with just a very a little bit of quadratic up, upward curvature, and here's the tangent line, the dot, the dashed line. Suppose they give you a formula for this, c of x. Well, then you can do the same thing. It's just that you can get the, the um, c prime of x itself. One thing I did here is, again, I calculated the wrong thing to do in this kind of context. How much does it cost total? That's just the height of this guy, 11,400, divided by 200. Uh, million boxes, that's going to be $57 a box. That is an expensive box of sporks, let me tell you. That is not how much an additional box of sporks is going to cost me to make. What I really should do is take C prime of x. I just use my usual shortcuts, 5 plus 0.02x, and then plug in. 5, it turns out to be 5 plus 4. Still a fairly expensive box of sporks, but nothing like the $57 gourmet uh, deluxe box. It's just $9. The slope of this dash line is $9. Then you can go on with the DCDX and make it, do some uh, what-if games about should I increase production or decrease production based on this number.